Hi, everyone still is talking about the corona crisis, which keeps spreading around the world, and in lots of places a second wave looms. While the pandemic is acute, climate change persists to likely be the global challenge for humanity. The question is, what can we as experts who employ computers and computation to tackle management and public policy issues learn from such crises and challenges? With due respect to the big data hype, but mainly looking in the rearview mirror at lots of data and fitting some standard black box model to them is doomed to fail us in strategic and political decision support, most obviously when we do not have sufficient data from the past. Whenever we deal with a complex dynamic system, irrespective of it being a natural system or a social system like an organization, we should consider the system structure more explicitly because it's the structure that causes behavior. In gray box models, we should instead consider the main components of a system under management and their interconnections as explicitly as necessary and may be possible. Putting that structure in a suitable mathematical model that can be analyzed by a computer will then allow us to explain observed behavior and to predict behavior in the future to test different policies. We should consider the importance of transparency because we may have to explain our decisions to stakeholders and the public. In modeling technical systems, we have achieved a lot already and looking at this Modelica model from the Vehicle Interfaces Library, you may concur with me in noting the extreme clarity and transparency. Even though it is complex, the model fits on a single page. We can drill down into more detail because the model is built in a hierarchical fashion. The structure and nature of the real system is immediately clear. The cyber-physical modeling approach nicely separates the causal domain of control and the a-causal sphere of the physical system where the same model component may be reused in different contexts. We do not need to write equations. Instead, we can build this model simply by dragging components onto a canvas and then connecting them. How can this convenience be made available for modeling social and environmental systems to support decision making? While there are many different methods for modeling and simulation out there, we will now focus on system dynamics, which was invented by the MIT professor and electrical engineering pioneer J. White Forrester in the 1950s. System dynamics is especially suited to support decision making in a strategic management or public policy context. Furthermore, it is capable of integrating other modeling approaches as well. At the heart of any model in system dynamics, there are the state variables called stocks, reservoirs or levels, as they are in economics. These hold some kind of conserved matter or simply entities. In a strategic business context, we would first of all think about a company's resources. These may be tangible, like capital equipment, inventories or employees, as well as intangible, like capabilities, reputation or information. We may also include loyal customers or competitors. Resources and other important stocks have to be grown and built over time, and they also deteriorate or are simply lost. Transitions of matter or entities are modeled as in, out or net flows that work at a certain rate in continuous time again exactly as it is done in economics. We cannot simply double our customers or employees in an instance. In the same vein, reputation can be lost quickly but may take years to rebuild. An essential feature of system dynamics is to explicitly model significant delays in any transition. Often we have what is called an aging chain instead of just a single stock. New employees will become more experienced Loyal customers may become disloyal. Reliable capital equipment will eventually become unreliable and finally defective. The next step in modeling is to show how resources and other stocks determine the output or performance of the system. We will then model how that information is used for decision making, which directly or indirectly influences the rates of growth or decline in the system. Complexity arises because there are other influences as well. While we often blame exogenous shocks, we tend to forget about internal feedback within the system. This will become quite clear 
when we look at the mother of all epidemic models, the SIR model by Kermick and McKendrick. A higher number of infected individuals will raise the force of infection, which in turn will lead to an increased number of newly infected. We are thus looking at a reinforcing feedback loop causing exponential growth. On the other hand, an increase in the number of susceptibles will lead to a higher number of newly infected people, which accordingly will then lower the number of susceptibles, making this per definition a balancing feedback loop. While we cannot immediately see this without looking at the underlying equations, the stock of the susceptibles is multiplied with that of the infected to determine the rate of people becoming infected. Therefore, this is a nonlinear dynamical system. In a nonlinear system, the dominant feedback loop driving the overall behavior can shift. With these rather simple building blocks, it is possible to capture the main drivers of a system's complexity in a concise and flexible way. The beauty of system dynamics really is that we have managed to smuggle differential equation models into social science applications without getting caught. But even for an experienced engineer, the stock and flow metaphor may help to build intuition when dealing with differential equations. There's a free system dynamics library that can be downloaded via the System Modeler Library Store. It has been out there for some years now and using it we can tap into the convenience that Modelica offers. As the example from the Wolfram block shows, we can model market dynamics using that library in a hierarchical fashion, nicely documented on the fly using System Modeler. Unfortunately, in the system dynamics community, the System Dynamics Library and Modelica, as a modeling language, have not really caught on. Let's take a closer look to find out why the existing approach to System Dynamics using Modelica is not making the most out of what the language has to offer and how a new approach might help to change this. The System Dynamics Library for Modelica was developed by Professor Sellier and the students at ETH Zurich. Its visual style is rather close to Jay Forrester's original notation. In this simple model, we have three stocks A, B and C. A flow component and a converter component, which simply turns a constant parameter into a constant input signal. Stock A has an initial value of 10, while B and C are empty. Material flows out of A at a constant rate of one unit per unit of time and we have connected the outflow to both B and C, which is perfectly legal with these components. Simulating the model with time going from 0 to 10 in System Modeler Simulation Center reveals that stock A will be drained completely as we should expect. But B and C have both grown by exactly 10 units as well. Since we postulated to concern ourselves with the transport of some mass in system dynamics, the seductive ease with which we were lured into violating the conservation of matter principle does not bode too well. To see why this is possible, we need to take a closer look at the model's connectors and its internal mechanics. A white triangle modelica denotes an information or signal output, while a blue triangle conversely indicates an information input. Surprisingly, the arrow pointing outward from stock A in fact represents information input, while the arrow pointing into the flow component is an output. The System Dynamics Library exclusively models signal flows. Its components are always blocks. So the rate information is set by the flow component and then exported to a connected stock, which internally uses a block called integrator to accumulate the flow. The repercussions of restraining ourselves to signal flows go further than luring us into violation of conservation principles. We cannot simply have two flows and then connect them to the inflow connector of a single stock. Instead, we have to add the rates manually. In the diagram shown, we need two different classes for the stocks. One that has a single outflow and another one that has a single inflow. And you guessed it. We need yet another class to have a stock with both an input and an output connector. There's also no component to represent a biflow that may go in either direction. 
Unfortunately, all of this forfeits many advantages of the cyber physical modeling language Modelica. So let's go about system dynamics modeling in a different fashion. In this simple model of a company's production chain, some kind of durable good is produced at a certain rate and accumulates into our finished goods inventory. From there, the products will be shipped to customers, here anonymously represented by the installed base stock. After the average lifetime has elapsed, the goods are scrapped and in our case, replaced. The rate of shipping is simplistically determined by the rate of scrapping and the rate of first-time purchases. The notation that you see here is typical for the dedicated system dynamics modeling tools. Let's now make each variable a separate component by drawing a frame around it. We can now determine the connectors we need as interfaces between the components in this model. Instead of just using information inputs and outputs, we will add an a-causal physical connector and call it a mass port. Assigning these connectors to the components in our model is now rather straightforward. Wherever a material flow in form of a double arrow pipeline leaves or enters a component, we simply place an A-causal connector, not worrying about the direction of flow. Finally, we can name the base classes used in the model according to their interfaces. There are two classes that only have signal ports. The information source has an information output only, while the converter has one or more inputs and one or more outputs. Components with one or two A-causal mass ports may have information inputs and outputs as well. Here we distinguish sources or sinks that have a single mass port and stocks and flows that have two mass ports. Note that while we may choose to make parameters explicitly visible by using them as an information source or a constant converter similar to the approach in the system dynamics library, parameters are often not made visible in a model's diagram view. Instead, they are encapsulated with the global model or within the component to which they pertain. Working with the base classes from the new business simulation library, we can now start out to build this simple supply chain where we at first ignore repurchases and instead simply model demand as a step input from 10 units per month to 100 units per month. Parameters for this first model are made explicit using constant converters as before. We start with a source called growth and the icon clearly shows the internal logic using the system dynamics metaphor. The source is connected to a material stock that cannot become negative called inventory. We then use a unidirectional flow component called transition to reach the material stock installed base. The component used for the installed base is a special type of a material stock called delay n. It indicates a higher order exponential delay structure that here as it has an average delay time of five years. While in the system dynamics notation the presence of a delay remains hidden, here it is clearly visible. The outflow from the installed base finally enters a cloud that is succinctly represented by a stock icon with infinite capacity. We have made system dynamics modeling quite colorful, as you may have noted, but there's a good reason for this. If you take a look at the event-driven process chain, a typical flowchart notation used for business process modeling, you will immediately spot the similarity. Events are shown in red and the continuous time analogy is material being in a defined state, thus our stocks are also shown in red. Processes shown in green are state transitions working at a certain rate in continuous time, so our flows are green as well. Sources or sinks simply combine a stock with infinite capacity and a flow. Using a converter that for obvious reasons is called add to and making use of the fact that stocks and flows report their amount or their rate via information output connectors, we can finally include the replacement purchases in our calculation for the shipment rate. 
Note that unlike the typical system dynamics notation, it is immediately clear that we add first-time purchases and the scrapping rate in the model. We do not need to look at equations. The diagram tells most of the story. Unfortunately, we committed a serious error in formulating this model, and in Simulation Center we will see lots of events being raised because we try to ship more than we produce. We have turned the inventory into a reservoir for antimatter, violating what the plus symbol on the stock indicates. To fix the model, we can use a policy component called First Order Stock Adjustment from the library. It simply controls the rate of inflow into a stock in order to keep a desired level given the current amount in the stock and its perceived outflow. Here we would like to keep inventory at 100 units and we assume exact knowledge of the rate of shipping at any time. Simulating the model with a horizon of 5 years reveals that the blue rate of production quickly tracks the rate of shipping shown in orange. I would like to conclude the introductory example with a final extension. Let's assume that we have 10 initial customers for a new product. There will be a stock of potential customers that we assume to be 250,000. For now, there will be no growth for this potential. Furthermore, the new product diffusion will be completely triggered by word of mouth. In the library, there is a diffusion component that can be used to compactly model this process called BAS diffusion in marketing, which is by the way exactly the same process as in an epidemic model. Note that stock and flow ports contain both the current stock level and the current rate for a connection. This enables us to have complex dynamics without having to do many additional connections. Using parameter input for the diffusion component, we assume that there will be a contact rate of 10 people per month for the customers and that a fraction of 2% of these contacts will turn potential customers to customers. We could, by the way, also have used a switch for the component to have a variable input for the parameters shown, making the component very flexible to use. Simulating this model in the simulation center for 10 years reveals that our production rate will peak a little more than four years after the product has released. At that time, we will have to produce around 12,700 units per month. After about seven years, there will just be replacement purchases. Probably by then, it is really time for a new release. Let me conclude this presentation with a short tour of the main packages to be found in the library. The basic classes should by now already sound familiar. In the package stocks, you will find reservoirs used to represent entities stored in a specific state. Processes that move entities from one stock to another at a specific rate can be found in the package flows. There are unidirectional and bidirectional flows, as well as more complex interactions which allow to model, say, a lot Terra model of predator-prey dynamics in just one single component. Sources or sinks describe growth or decline processes at a system's border. Converters transform information and also include lookups to graphically model functional relations. External information, for example time series data, can be entered using information sources. More advanced components can be found in the package Molecules of Structure, a term coined in the SD community to describe recurring model structure. In this presentation I used first order stock adjustment and diffusion from that package. The package's decision making or policy and information processing collect more complex types of converters. The remaining packages collect more or less complete subsystems. These are categorized according to their connectors. Blocks represent subsystems of control or management and have no mass ports. Incubators are subsystems that only have stock ports. Transceivers are the most general subsystems. Think of a factory in a supply chain that have stock ports as well as flow ports. Actuators finally only have flow ports to push or pull entities from or to other subsystems. That's it. I would like to point out that the library will be published together with the next release of System Modeler in the library store as open source under the European Union public license. 
Feel free to contact me or the people at Wolfram Math Corps with any further questions. And don't ever use spreadsheets again for strategic decision making. Thank you for your attention.